Now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. It's Puckle! Puckle! It's Puckle! Puckle! Pokemon Underground Champions League, oh yeah! Puckle! Puckle. And welcome to the 424th episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Seth Vilo. Here today with my supreme co-hosts, we have the spectacular Sigma. Hello! And the splendorous Sublime. Hello. Sickening. (laughs) I tried to find words that start with S, because today's the S show. That's how you know it's going to be a big success. Exactly. (laughs) We're hoping to be very succinct in our topic. Your term, Sigma. <laughs> you gotta say one. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and welcome to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name our leader Thatch came up with in his basement in 2007. And welcome to the show if you're new. Welcome back if you're old. We've got a great show lined up for you today. We are a show that talks everything Pokemon, from the video game to the trading card game to making Pokemon out of perler beads, which is something that at least Thatch and I are very fond of doing. I've got a couple, um, and I know he's been doing it on stream every now and again, so (laughs) it's fun. But we're going to get right into it. But before we do that, how have you guys been? What's been in your in your Pokemon world, or or even just general world for the last couple weeks since you've been on last. What has been in my Pokemon world? Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a good way to put it. That's a good su- That's a good summary. Have you guys been raiding at all? I know that the Appleton raid has been going on. Anybody get a thick fat one yet? Because uh, if yes, you have, I, I hate you. I, did. I hate you. I'm more interested in getting Dive Ball Lapras, though, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one that comes out. But I have Pokemon Sword, so I can't do that. So we gotta rely on the generosity of others. Yeah. Oh. Pray people don't fill up other rooms. It's really hard. Unless you're <laughs> actually organizing it. Mm-hmm. Did you know Lapras yeah. was good? <laughs> I had a sneaking suspicion. Yeah, turns out I know... dual screens is good. Yeah, turns out... Yeah. yeah. I know it's looking to be bonkers in the trading card game once the Sword and Shield set drops. It's like so the only G- VMAX card I'm interested in on that side yeah. of things. As of right now, yeah. maybe... Uh, the Rillaboom coming out after, in the next set's cool, too, but... Yeah. But we've got a while before that one that, that's hits May. us. That's a while. Yeah. Oh, well. But anyway, I mean, I've been kind of doing the same kind of stuff. I've been kind of off... Pokemon for a little bit. I've been just really diving into Stardew Valley and Subnautica, but I mean, oh well. Yeah. Mainly because those are Poke those are those are games that start with the letter S. Yeah. So that mm-hmm. makes sense. And I was gonna say I've been on that three houses still, which ends with an S. And was like <laughs> the most blessed week for Fire Emblem last week. Oh my god. Good week. Yeah. It's a good week for yeah. us. Uh, uh. Yeah, since ADDQ was, uh, what, two weeks ago now that this is airing, uh, I've been trying to learn the Pokemon Sword speedrun, because it's actually not too bad compared to the Pokemon Shield speedrun. Really? You just what, take what the makes the difference? there's like a 45% chance you make it to the end. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there, there's other things too, but you only need Sobble for the Sword run, so it makes it a lot easier. Okay. Huh. Is it just because of the... Uh... Gym leader choices, or what makes the big difference? Because you get Uh, rock instead of ice, that's nice. You get rock and you get fighting, so Inteleon can do fine on that. The shield speedrun has to use like a combination of the Arcanine and Excadrill right now, so you have to worry Mm. about two Pokemon being worth taking through the run. Yeah, that sounds less speedy. Yeah, dealing with Ghost and dealing with uh, ice. Well, ice isn't too bad to deal with, there's like five things. Right, like you could do anything. (laughs) <laughs> the ghost is probably the bigger issue. Right. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I think that's a good place to kind of wrap that up. So let's kick it on over to the news. <laughs> Lavender Town Radio Tower. This just in. 
And on to the news. In the news, we have a couple of things. It's been kind of a quiet week after the Direct, because that normally happens, where there's just kind of silence after they do <laughs> after they do a big drop like that. So, I mean, just kind of scrolling back, it looks like there's a couple things going on. One of which is that, as of recording, tomorrow, Sunday, is Piplop Community Day. So, sorry, listeners, you've missed it. Yep, you get to so. wait a year. For the rerun. Oh, well. You can get it at Christmas. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> get it at Christmas. Get your Empoleons at Christmas You heard it time. here first. Exactly. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> we like to bring you early news here in Puckle. <laughs> We're already starting to plan for Christmas 2020. Um, other than that, I think Ethan's available in Masters, that game that we all know and love. Yeah, they added a Syncorp update. It's not as great as one would hope. There's only like three characters that fully utilize it right now, so whatever. Mm-hmm. So grab your Ethans and Cyndaquils, I guess. That's a fun thing. Um, another thing that happened this week is that the little web-based anime thing, the Twilight Wings shows, have started, and they're adorable. There's only one episode out right now, and I think it's cute as heck. <laughs> it might be worth waiting and just binging it all when it comes when it's done. That would be mm-hmm. fun. Because it's a monthly show i guess so that Mm -hmm. it might just be too short for most people so yeah i think it's like six or seven minutes long Mm -hmm. so it's still it's still adorable you heard that here first too yeah yeah and it's a different animation it's not like other shows and things that we've seen so that's fun it reminds me when they did that legacy collection of videos yeah for uh sun and moon um it was throughout the series well no no it was leading up to sun and moon's release yeah they were yeah where you see Giovanni interact with um, Silver, I think, and things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, those were just yeah. fun times. That was cool. Yeah. Deoxys battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, other news going on. There's a hatchathon going on in Pokemon. No, I lied. No, no I think that's yeah, I lied. That's over. That's over now. Look at me being an idiot. There's not even any Go news. <laughs> uh, well, the community day that happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Latios and Latios are going to be available on the weekend of the 24th to the 27th. So if you don't have one of those yet, uh, go out and grab them. Apparently they're going to be appearing as level five raids in addition to Heatran. So if you don't have any of those three, now's your chance to fill those Pokedex slots. And I mean, the only other thing I can think of going on is what Sublime pointed out is going on right now in Dallas, Texas. So what's that? A regional championship. For the yep. VGC. And the TCG. And TCG. I believe yeah. it's expanded for TCG yeah. right now yeah. there. They're, so. they're testing the field for what they have to ban on Thursday. <laughs> is it this Thursday? I think it is. And Thank that's a guys. format where Dark Box is good, so get into it. Exactly. Yeah. I love Dark Patch. I miss Dark Patch. It's okay, we're getting Metal Patch. No, I don't want Metal Patch. <laughs> That'll be good. I, I'm worried for it. Any patch is good. Not untrue. Except Fairy Patch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except Fairy Patch, now that that's gone. Or isn't being reprinted. Folks listening to this no, Fairy types are not changed to Psychic types. They're still the same type. There's been apparently a lot of confusion about that. People thinking that they're going to errata all the Fairy types to become Psychic types. Yeah, no, no, no. no. He's going for it's it. just going to be like a Legacy type, exclusive yeah. to Expanded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In exactly. like two years. So when they're all yeah. updated out. Right. Yeah. We still have them. Like, Guardian is still good. So, yeah. Don't it, just discount fairy type. It's as good as it's going to be. Whereas, <laughs> ADP. True. Oh, boy. It's true. Is at its weakest. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, that's the news. It Not a lot happened. Not a whole lot happened. It's kind of quiet right after a direct. So, we'll probably get a little bit more info coming out. Especially with, uh, the imminent release of Home, which I imagine won't be until the end of February, even though they said just February, but we'll find out. It'll be fun. It's a short month. But <laughs> yeah, it's a short month. It, we don't have to wait too long. But anyway, let's wrap up the news and let's go quiz your co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. We'll be right back. <laughs> And 
welcome to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. These two are going to be operating as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions that all come from our listeners over at the Discord server. So if you want to try and stump our co-hosts, hop over there and throw some questions at us. They're all curated by our friend Ribby over there, so he's picked out a few of them for us today. That'll be great, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. As always, this segment is brought to you by AnimeGravy.com. Your one-stop shop for everything anime and nerdiness related. They're awesome people over there. I've seen some of their stuff, and I just really want it if my wallet wasn't as pressed for cash as it is at the moment. But anyway, um, each question is worth one point, except for the one that's not. And that one's worth two, because there's a bonus point attached to it. These guys have a hint they can use as a lifeline. If they don't use that and get all the questions correct, they can cash it in for an extra point for a possible total of seven. They're in a race against their fellow co-hosts to 30 points. Whoever gets there first gets something cool that is yet to be determined. <laughs> right now, Linian and Whimsicott are the only ones on the board. Each of them have six points, so beat them, guys. This will be fun. We did, two weeks ago. Beat them again. <laughs> yeah, because it was you guys that crossed the, crossed the threshold there, I think. Mm -hmm. So props to you guys. At the same time. That was fun. At the same time. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. But anyway, we're going to dive right into this so you guys ready yeah yes awesome question number one comes from liger and he wants to know what pokemon has the most unique dex entries in a single regional pokedex hmm uh -huh. i feel like all creamy is a high contender because i believe each flavor has its own type of, or its own entry that would definitely take it then i i feel like that's a that's a strong contender right there. I was thinking like maybe Deoxys, but that, yeah, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Alchemy's got like nine forms, so. <laughs> Unless Spinda gets it. <laughs> and then there probably has different entries for Sword and Shield too, so <laughs> that's 18 or so. Let's go with All Creamy. Yeah, that's a good guess. Yeah. All right. All Creamy is correct with 10 apparently separate dex entries. So good job, guys. All right, question number two comes from the boy Gardevoir, and tell me if you need this reworded, because I figured out what he was trying to say. So, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, which weather has the most abilities, meaning like total number of abilities of Pokemon, that set them? Does that make sense? Yeah, so which has the most, like, setters for that weather? Correct. Okay. In Sword and Shield. So does that count Dynamax? No. It's just ability-based. Like, different abilities, or... Like Sandstream, Drizzle. Yeah, so which is the most present, I guess? Oh, you know what? It's probably Sandstream. There's, what, three or four of those in the game? Yeah, because they added a new one. And it's it's different ways to set sand, yeah. Yeah, because they added a new one with the Sandaconda line. Oh, that's true, too, yeah. Because there's, there's Pelipper for rain. So is that your final answer? Yeah, let's go with that. Mm hmm You guys got it. It's total number of overall setters. So Hippowdon is one, Tyranitar is one, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Each each Pokemon separately that can set the weather. Oh, yeah. I think Little Hippo sets it too, so. Mm hmm And Sand has six total if you include Sand Spit, which is that ability you guys were talking about. Yeah. And then there's Hail with three, Sun with three, and then Rain with just Pelipper. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys got it. Poor Pelipper. Working overtime. Yeah, no one cares about Polytoad, so. No, not right now. Not yet. Not until he comes out. Even when it comes out, it's not going to be exciting. Even when it comes out, usually you want Pelipper. Yeah, any anytime you can choose something with recovery over... Like, over oh, the, the thing with the momentum boosting and the recovery? <laughs> exactly. Anyway, moving on to question number three, which as always is a Pokedex entry. So, this one comes from Retro Typhlosion, and its Ultra Sun entry reads, Motionless... It hangs from trees, waiting for its bug Pokemon prey to come out. Its favorite in Alola is Cutie Fly. Well, that's just me. <laughs> huh. Hangs from trees. See, I was thinking Slackoth, but I don't think that's an Ultra Sun. Maybe Golbat? I could see Golbat. That hangs from trees. Right, right? I don't know that it hangs from trees, but it's a vampire, so... I feel like it could hang from trees. <laughs> it's not like Passimian's hanging from trees. Right, and Golbat would be, like, a predator type of thing, you know? Mm hmm What else would hang from trees? 
that would eat cutie fly. Right? What kind of monster eats cutie fly is the good question. Right? That's the real question. <laughs> like, Golbat's that big of a monster. I could imagine that. It's got that big mouth, too. It would just go right in. <laughs> it's like all mouth. I don't know where the rest of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Let's go with Golbat, you know? Yeah. Golbat final answer? I guess. Golbat is incorrect. The answer is Pineco. How does that work? Friendship with Pineco is over. Now Cutie Fly is my best friend. <laughs> Friendship, apparently. <laughs> I don't like you anymore, Pineco, eating them Cutie Fly. <laughs> that don't even make sense because Cutie Fly has the advantage. I guess it hangs from a tree. It resists. Uh, I guess that's technically a thing that would hang from a tree. At least I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, that was a weird one. Like, I was reading over that, and it's like, no. No way. No. No. Anyway, on to the next one. Let's see if you guys can redeem yourself. So, we are at question four, the bonus point question. So, this one comes from Lord Snorlax. Which not fully evolved Pokemon have been used in the Elite Four? And you're going to get one point for each three. Haunters, I believe, are a thing. Wait, what? could you repeat the question? Yeah. What not fully evolved Pokemon have been used in the Elite Four? Murkrow. As an example, Haunter is correct. Agatha used Haunter, so that's one. Does it need to have to evolve in the game that it's in? No. So we could say Onyx. So Murkrow, Onyx, Haunter. Dusclops. Dusclops. Bam, that's four. So far you're at four, so that's one point. Four for one point? I thought it's like, oh, we got well, four three points. for one. Three for one. Dragonairs. Dragonairs. There were lots of Dragonairs. <laughs> That's correct. So you're at five. Oh, speaking of Dragonair, was there not a shell gone? I can't remember if there was a shell gone or not. I'll give it to you. That's six. Okay. So that's two points. You can try and get that third point back. Okay. Um. Let's see. I don't think Lorelai had anything. We got Bruno's. Mm-hmm. Because it wasn't like he had any machokes. Oh, you know what? What else did Karen have? She had the Murkrow. Did she have a Sneasel? I don't think she did. I think that was a rival thing. No, I guess she didn't. All right. Yeah, you're right. That did belong to the rival. Uh, Rhydon. Ah. I, that was a champion Pokemon. I don't know if it counts. Yeah, Rhydon is not. That's a champion. It's only the Elite Four people, so okay. I won't count that against you. Uh, did Koga use anything? Poison. I know. He used poison. He didn't have a gold bat, did he? I bet he did. I bet he did. Oh wait, no, because he didn't become a. Uh... He didn't have a gold bat, but I, Agatha might have had a gold bat. You know what? That sounds like a thing. That's that's true. That is correct. Agatha with gold bat is correct. You're one. You've got two to go. I'm trying to think of anything in the because nothing in the Sinnoh Elite Four would have evolved further. I don't think because all of. That's when most of the evolutions were added in by that point. You can use your hint if you need to. Do we want to? I feel like that's a good time to, yeah. And you have gotten a question incorrect, so... Oh, wait, there was a Celia. Was... I feel like there might have been Celios. Celio is correct. Glacia had one of those, so you've got one left. Did we use our hint? Yeah, might as well. Let's use the hint. All right, your hint. This Pokemon's evolution was introduced in Galar. Oh... Hmm. Evolution introduced in Galar. And may not be for the same form of this Pokemon. Okay. Um, did anyone use a Mr. Mime? Did Will use a Mr. Mime? So what are all the things that got, like, a new evolution? You have Lanoon, and I don't think anyone was using a Lanoon. Meowth wouldn't have been it. That'd be the shock. That'd be the shocker. Elite Four Lanoon, you know? No Corsolas. Right. So what else is there besides the Mime? No, well, Yamask isn't a thing. Oh, wait, no, I guess not. That's a good point. Um, That's not another stage. But I think there were only like five Galar evolutions, so two of them were from like base forms. So maybe it was Mr. Mime. Yeah, I guess we can try that one. Unless we can think of what, what's the fifth one and that turns out to be it. I won't let you guys suffer any longer. Mr. Mime is correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lucian used a Mr. Mime. So that's three points right there. You redeemed yourself. I feel bad for Lucian having to use a Mr. Mime. I feel bad for Lucian being from Sinnoh. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. All right. And we are on now to question five. You guys are at five for four. So good job. 
And now let's see if you can get a clean sweep and tie with Linian and Whimsicott. Question five, as always, is the base stat question. So Ribby wants to know, which electric type Pokemon has the lowest base defense? Pichu is a strong candidate. <laughs> Pichu is a very strong candidate. It's probably like Pichu or, or uh, Tynemo. I can't imagine anything being below Pichu. Tynemo, I feel like, has the same stat across the board or something. Like a 40 across the board, and I think Pichu's probably, probably like something 20. sad like that, but Pichu's like sad. Because Pikachu's frail. If Pikachu's frail, Pichu got me, you know, extra frail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baby Pokemon in Gen 2 were real bad. So am I hearing Pichu? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pichu is correct with a base stat of 15. That's sad. The next lowest is Blitzel with a base stat of 32. Oh, so dang. more than double Pikachu. Pichu. <laughs> oh, Blitzel. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed Blitzel is number two. Yeah, neither would I. And with that much of a disparity. I probably would have yeah, guessed like Elected or something. Craziness. But anyway, that changes the leaderboard by making it all the same. Now Linian, Whimsicott, Sublime, and Sigma are all at six points. So congratulations, guys. You caught up. You're well on your way to getting to 30 and winning again as a team. So good job. Brought to you by the power of the letter S, you know. Brought to you by the power of the letter S. I love it. Did we have any S answers? I don't think we did. Celio. Celio was an S. <laughs> Celio. We had one S answer. Perfect. Anyway, that wraps up Puckle's Pokey Quiz. We are going to kick it on over to the topic, so we will be right back. Hey guys, pseudo host Seth Vilo here, and this is the part of the show where we would normally read an iTunes review, but as you've figured out by now, Thatch is on a well-deserved break this week. So... Keep those iTunes reviews coming. We will kick that over to next week. We'll read you more of them then. But other than that, we're going to kick it on over to the topic from here. Hope you're enjoying it so far. And welcome to the topic. Our topic this week is going to be the legacy of third versions. Because now that we've gotten announced that we're getting DLC things instead of Pokemon Ultra Sword Plus and Ultra Shield Plus. Pointy Sword. Pointy Sword. I don't know what you do with it. Shimmery a shield, <laughs> yeah. Thick, thick shield. <laughs> but now that we're getting now that we're getting expansion passes and DLCs, which could last for, you know, as long as they decide to keep going with it, mm -hmm. we're gonna kinda just talk about the legacy of the third version and what we've liked, what we've disliked, what was introduced that was cool in all of those. So let's just let's just dive in from the very beginning. What were our opinions of yellow? I liked it personally. I mean, back, I liked, it was the first third version, so like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It animated the game. You got all three starters. Jesse and yes. James were there. Like, it was cool. Mm-hmm. And the colors. If you ever played the Serping Pikachu game, that was a that was yeah. a fun time. That was also the first game to have a Pokemon following you. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, and that was fun. And everyone loves that. Yeah, you couldn't evolve Pikachu though, but whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't matter. It, it, I'm pretty sure the Venusaur Blastoise and Charizard will cover you. Pidgeot yeah. was fine too in that in those games at least. So heck, Persian was okay in those games because you could crit everything. Oh, I loved Gyarados in those games because you could teach it special attacks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. Because it's got a de it had decent special Articuno back when Articuno was like dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> back before Stealth Rocks existed. Mm hmm. Fun times. I hope the new Articuno is going to be cool. <laughs> it looks cool. It was mostly a simple remake. Mm -hmm. But like the fact that they included all of those anime references was really fun as a kid at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which was its purpose. So I feel like it's successful at accomplishing what it like tries to. Mm -hmm. I feel like it did a good job tying together kind of the developing Pokemon world where it kind of made the anime a related thing to the game. It cleaned up sprites. Yeah. Yeah, that too. And when you're trying to absorb all the Pokemon in the world, seeing like, oh, I saw this on the big TV, mm -hmm. and now it's in my game. And there's Jesse and James. They're hilarious characters. I love them. I do love them. They're so great. They're great. Having that all exist in one place in one game kind of brought the universe together as it was starting to develop. So yeah. I really liked that. Yeah. That one gets a pass. Yeah. Then you have Crystal. Yep. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. The first game that had a female playable character. Which is good. That's important. But you could have put that in Ruby and Sapphire and it would have been equally okay. Mm-hmm. You didn't add too much to what was already Pokemon Gold Silver. 
it felt like a downgrade because you went from having like Ho and Lugia being these really awesome stars to like, oh, and there's Suiku, which is not on the same level. They made it a challenge to catch ho in that game too. What did you have to do again? I believe you had to catch all of the legendary beasts before you could get to ho Ugh. If I remember correctly. And they gave you Suikun pretty easy, but roaming legends are never fun. Never fun. At least they got rid of one of them, making Suikun a static encounter, but... Yeah. I do like the in, in the remakes for Gen 2 for Heart Gold and Soul Silver, they did the Suikun storyline. Mhm. Mhm. They kind of combined it. Yeah. So it's like we don't need a third version. That was awful. Here's the cool thing we did. Mhm. The unknown Pokédex was a thing that didn't make sense. No one should ever No. Nope, no, nope, just no. Nope, just nope on Crystal. Don't do Crystal. Yeah. I'm kind of biased against Johto to begin with. Maybe I'm a monster. I love Johto, and I don't like Crystal. So there you go. Both sides, neither likes it. Mm -hmm. I think they removed Marie. Yeah, they did. They did. You had to trade that from the gold-silver. Yeah, that's no fun. (laughs) Yeah. There was, I, f- I think there was one other weird one like that that they just, you couldn't cash, and I feel like it was Giraffe Rig, but I might be wrong. Mm. But it was weird. Third versions have interesting decks a lot of the time, because they have to cut some yeah. things, so the other versions have unique stuff. Yeah, but the Crystal decks didn't really matter, because the Gold and Silver decks were, like, fine as they were. Because mm-hmm. it didn't really add anything, since you could catch most of the Pokemon anyway, outside of, like, the starters and legendaries, and Crystal didn't add them back in, so... Yeah, and when you're only at 251, there's not a whole lot that you have to catch to begin with. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we don't like Crystal. Yeah, it was okay. I wouldn't recommend it. So I guess the next one would be Emerald. Which is a fan favorite for a lot of people. Including me, but I'm biased for Hoenn, like hard. I don't even like Hoenn, but I know a lot of people love Emerald. I've never played Emerald myself. So what's so great about Emerald? Sell it. Well, first off, you got the Battle Frontier, which was yeah. a great design. Mm-hmm. The downside was you didn't have flat levels yet, so you had to have your entire team that you took into the facilities be equal level, but you had a variety of things you could do. Okay. Mm-hmm. I guess it's cool how they have like all the legends in that one. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, is that there's kind of they kind of changed the story a little bit to having to get Rayquaza to calm down the two, mm-hmm. and where you're kind of fighting Aqua and Magma at the same time a little bit like yeah unified story yeah you're not just like yeah let's just on on sapphire you're not just yeah magma's fine we'll just we'll just desolate the land like i'm on magma team basically <laughs> and alternatively on um ruby where it's like yeah let's just aqua oh, gang, no, aqua gang. Mm-hmm. yeah this emerald is kind of like yeah both these guys are crazy let's let's summon god and let's stop both of you yeah yeah that's true that's a good point yeah but they didn't balance the level of it so when you caught it, it was still level 70 yeah wasn't this a more difficult game isn't it considered like a really difficult pokemon game i didn't think it was too bad when i played through it i've always heard it was mm. more difficult than ruby and sapphire mm. i don't know if that's I, i'm wondering maybe could you even catch rayquaza before or did you have to go back to catch it did you just get it to stop the fighting i feel like you just get it to stop the fighting but i may be thinking yeah but of... then you can go straight to the sky pillar right afterwards i think yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm getting my facts right. It's also, been a it has Juan, I guess. Yeah. There's, there's some. <laughs> yeah, because nothing's better than a Mono Water Elite Four member after you beat the Mono Water Gym Leader. Wasn't it a Mono Water cha- Champion? Yeah, the mm-hmm. the champion. Yeah. But still, it's like, oh, cool, I guess. Which is like kind of a shame because so many people love Steven. He went off to collect rocks. Oh, I guess a lot of people love Wallace, too. He was a post-game boss, at least. Mm-hmm. I don't think they added too many new Pokemon that you could catch during the journey, though. But they added a bunch of mm-hmm. things for the national decks after you beat it. In the Safari Zone and in the Battle Frontier, I know you could catch Pseudo Wudo and things like that. Mm-hmm. A Smeargle Cave, I believe there was. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, they didn't modify the Hoenn decks too much, but they did allow more Pokemon to be caught. Yeah, that was one where it was kind of like a lot of story things and not a whole lot of decks and Pokemon and encounter changes, I feel like. Mm-hmm. It works. Mm-hmm. You got to choose the laddie you got. That was cool. Yeah. That is cool. I think they changed the Braille puzzles, too. Don't quote me on that, though. I, f- I have a gut feeling that you're right. I mean, it, again, to the story changes. I could be remembering cool. uh, the next game, though. Platinum. Yeah. Let's just dive into that one now that we've kind of recapped a little bit of a little bit of Emerald. At least that one has a purpose to exist. <laughs> yeah. 
I do like how it's kind of the same thing with Emerald, where they changed the story enough that it gives you a new like reason to get the new legend. Like instead, Giratina in the old one, it was just like, oh, unless you know it's there, you have no idea it's there. But it, yeah. now it's battling gods, and you have to get the other super battling god to calm everything down. You get a whole new world that his his cool gravity world you have to go to. Yeah, that was a fun puzzle, and it was really cool graphics at the time for the DS. It looked really cool. Yeah. Oh, it was so trippy and awesome. I loved it. Yeah, traveling around this three-dimensional space that lets you walk on walls, waterfalls <laughs> everywhere. It was it was a fun time. Mm -hmm. Also, Diamond and Pearl are a mess, and you needed yeah. Platinum to fix it. That's yeah. that's what it is. It was the first third game to really fix the Pokedex going through the original games. Although, mm -hmm. I think that's to the detriment of Gen 4 in general, because Diamond and Pearl were such incomplete decisions a little bit they were because you had that entire like 20-ish pokemon at the end of the pokedex that weren't like regularly available in diamond and pearl mm -hmm. you had to mostly transfer them i believe or catch them in trophy garden or whatever yeah that's a weird thing and those were just added to platinum making the experience better like you yeah. could get magbees i think or magmars one of the two you could get fire types yeah yeah other than Ponyta. <laughs> the fire type and electric type trainer specialists actually got Pokemon in that game. The Elite Four used its correct type. There's a yeah, thought. There's yeah. an idea. I was just astounded that you're all that far into the series and that had to be like corrected. So good for Platinum for fixing. It shouldn't have had to, but it did. They added a yeah. Battle Frontier again, which yeah. I think was more solid than the original Emerald Frontier for what it was. Mm-hmm. Their facilities were more fleshed out. Battle Factory is always a favorite, though. Mm -hmm. I think the other cool thing that Platinum did, and it's it was kind of sort of a first, was but at that point we were at 493, mm -hmm. and they made it so you could really come close to getting all of them in they that They did game. bring back a lot of legends in that game, too, yeah. Yeah, because previously it was hard to do, especially because you you were just flat missing on a couple couple Pokemon from, like, Gen two ish that was a good way to bring them about a lot of them were stuck in uh coliseum from gen one or gen yeah. three like ho and lugia but you didn't get those till heart gold soul silver mm -hmm. the reggie gigas event was really cool that they did at the time too mm -hmm. i don't know if you guys got to experience that but you got the toys r us reggie gigas i think it was a level 100 and you could it opened up three special caves where you could find the original reggies within the game of platinum mm-hmm and then after you caught those, you got to go catch a level one Regigigas. That was a nice design. That's right. Yeah. I thought you could get in that game somehow a level one like Dialga or Palkia if you wanted. That was Heart Gold. Oh, never mind. And they each had a special move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you got the egg versions of Dialga and Palkia and Heart Gold Soul Silver, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Also completely broken for going through the story. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, Fandom's a good game. Yeah, it's a good game in part because what it's the third version of was not that great. Mm -hmm. There you have it. Yeah. All right, Sublime. Here's the reins. On to the best third <laughs> version we've had. A sequel. This was the first time yeah. we did not a third version, but like a full new story. And what I really love about Unova is the fact that it is like you get to see character growth in a way that you very frequently do not in the Pokemon series because you're revisiting the same characters um, and you're seeing what they've been up to two years later. Yeah, it feels like Pokemon Gold and Silver in that way. Yeah, that's why I love Gold and Silver in general and also why I love Unova because you get to see characters like evolve. Like Sharon grow from like a, an experienced trainer to a... To being a gym leader. That was so cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Elisa yeah. changing her hair color because fashion is always changing. Mm -hmm. They changed the <laughs> route you go through the game. It, it, they changed it a lot, actually. Yeah, it's like, okay, now we get to go to the ice gym. Nope. And they added a lot of new routes, too. It does not feel like you're going through the same region twice, necessarily. Even the Victory Road is different, and it's a really long one, too. Oh, yeah. Because it still has the castle ruins from the first game. Mm -hmm. From the Team Plasma Castle. You can r stumble upon N's room. Also, the stuff they did with Team Plasma in that game was really cool, too. And ends Pokemon. Yeah, they turned them into, like, two fighting sides. It was really cool. The memory system was fun, too. That's yeah. true! I forgot about that. You got to see the story that happened between the two years. And if you played it on the same, like, system and you had, like, a save file for the old one, 
you could battle against um, Sharon's old team, and it'll recognize which starter you used in that game. Yup, I remember that. Another thing I really enjoyed was the uh, metal system that was in the game. Also hard mode exists. Mm -hmm. The metals were like achievements, though. Yeah. And for some reason, they never brought... Well, I can't say never that's brought weird. them back, because technically they were in Gen 6, but they were locked to the online that's now dead, so you could only see them on Global Link. Mm. But they gave you achievements for walking through the Elite Four with the monotype teams, which was a great way to extend the game without doing too much. Yeah, that's cool. Another thing I think it did, which I feel like we're going to get a little bit of kind of flashback-ish type thing when we finally get the expansion passes is they kind of fixed the decks a little bit more where previously it was like gen five and only gen five mm -hmm. with that soft reset and then the sequels had a whole lot more non-gen five pokemon you could catch in there oh yeah yeah early game Riolu, early game magnemite tore it up yeah magnemite snaps that thing in two <laughs> magnemite is so good it, it kind of does but it's also just fun to run with yeah also, the Pokemon World Tournament was a really cool feature as well. Yes. Battling nothing but all the gym leaders and Elite Four and champions. That's a really cool thing. There were a lot of free shinies in that game, too. Because if you went through the Tree Hollow or Black City, whatever it was, they gave you either a Gibble or a Dratini, I believe. I think it's Dratini. And then Haxorus was also post-game as well. Mm -hmm. Nice yeah. black Haxorus in the... Uh, National Park or whatever. Also, oh, was, was there a Volcarona? For some reason, I'm thinking there was a Volcarona. Not a shiny one. No. Just there. You got it at a lower level in that yeah, game. Yeah, you got it at level 35. You could catch it a lot earlier in that game instead of the post game of black and white. Also, you get to see them, like, because you see the construction workers working on some routes, and then you see them having built what they were working on. It's, yeah. yeah, good stuff. I can't say enough good things. Yeah, getting to see the passage of time is a fun time in Pokemon. Something, whenever Pokemon does it, it works really well. Mm -hmm. I think that these were the best third version, like you said, Sublime, and because it makes it really felt like a third version. Because it felt like a new game instead of a like yeah, here's yeah. a slightly upgraded version, and that makes such yeah. a difference. Which is why I'm really excited about the new DLC. It's not Pokemon mm -hmm. like God, whatever people are calling the third version fantasy <laughs> trebuchet, right? <laughs> trebuchet, uh, ballista, right? So instead, it's like, oh, we're getting new stuff. And yeah. because more time has passed, I wouldn't be surprised if we get some old characters to show up doing some new things, too. So then they're mm -hmm. also, like, developed, you know? And that's just such mm -hmm. a good way of doing it. No one wants to do the same thing twice, but slightly different. <laughs> Which brings us to... Since we have nothing <laughs> officially third version in Generation 6... Guess sad. We... S we get the blessing of skipping over to Generation 7, which is exactly what Sublime just described, which is... The same thing plus crystals. And wormholes and stuff. Whatever. Yeah. They had such cool opportunity, but it just feels like they didn't take any of it. Like the alternate Crossma boss fight is something we always have to live with existing in a game. It's cool. Conceptually, I like it, but I think the difficulty is so artificial and the, there's so few ways to actually beat it. You can cheese it. You can cheese it. Just use a Zoro one. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not cheesing it, it's not fun, though. But Zoroa was a was a key ace in that fight. Yeah. Psychic, psychic, psychic. Why isn't it working? <laughs> I guess this was the first time that they added uh, new Pokemon to the games, though. Yeah. Yeah. Completely new dex number Pokemon to the games with the Ultra Beasts and Zeraora. Within the same... Yeah, that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because we yeah. didn't touch on that in Emerald where they added like, Speed Form Deoxys. That's true. Yeah. Because it and it, that's a new form, but it's still the same Pokemon. Yeah. These are entirely new ones. But these are Pokemon you could actually use in competitive fights that weren't broken. So that was cool. Mm. <laughs> Good old Stakataka. Uh, Naganadal has a word with you. <laughs> you know what? That they, they didn't even give it legendary stats because they knew it was broken. Yeah, it was at starter stats instead of legendary stats because they're like, this is probably broken, but let's see if this we is can, busted. Let's see if it can be okay. Yeah. No, it, it's not okay. <laughs> no. It's cute that it was at starter stats, though, because of the Pokedex entry for it, where it's like, this is a common starter in its world. So that's kind of cute, but whatever. 
Anyway, there's just so much they could have done. Like, I know Thatch talks about it every now and again, where, you know, you were expecting to see boss fights with the Ultra Beasts, like, a little bit more, and see the Coco fight them, um, and have to go find them um, a little bit more. The fact that it's not a remake, but just a reimagining, really lets it down. Or a sequel. Yeah. Like, a sequel would have been cool, A too. sequel would have been super cool. The Sun and Moon story was fine. You could have added some new um, trial captains, because maybe some of them aged out. What are they up to? That would have been cool to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no. Instead, you get the exact same things. Lily comes back as a trainer from Kanto. That would have yeah. been super cool. No, we didn't get any of that. <laughs> no. No. Here's the Lily story, but worse. It's just different version of the story, not even that different. Yeah. It's just you have to go through the same cutscenes over again. Which take up a third of the game, and... Ugh. Are we talking about Sword and Shield or Sun and Moon? Sun and Moon. Okay, I wasn't sure when you said cutscene. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, lots of dialogue. Yeah. You know what part of it might also be that there wasn't something between it that was a breather? So it's like, here's the same thing again that you just did. Yeah. Yeah, that was rough. So that didn't leave a good, that didn't leave a good taste in our mouth going into... Which helps on why it's exciting to have DLC yeah. so we don't have to do that again. Our mm -hmm. expectations are great, and I think for good reason. So the fact that this is new entirely, we're not going to have a Ultra Sun situation. Where it's like, oh, exactly. I did this before, but in a slightly better story way. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Executor Island. Wait, Lily, why are you staying? No. <laughs> <laughs> why are you still here? Get on the boat. Oh, no, that was one of the better scenes. Oh, God. Now we're on Executor Island and I have to battle pincers. Oh no. Yeah. But I'm we we touched on it a lot last week about what, what the DLC is looking to bring, and I'm just so so excited for it because it, it looks like it's all these third versions have really cool things to them, and this brings a lot of those cool things from all of them without me having to go through the same thing, do the same stuff. It just augments what we have already and it's not a third version. I only have to pay 30 bucks for two of them, so that's good. And even then, if you don't want to spend those 30 bucks, you can still get yeah. access to the Pokemon. Fine. That's the coolest and most considerate thing. If you have home is what's so nice, right? Like, Yeah. Not even if you have home. Like, if, if one of your friends catches well, it. Well, like, if you don't have to rely on other people, you could transfer them in through home, which I like. Right. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we were missing last week, I don't think anyone caught on until about Monday is that the press release says you can join raids that are from the new content, mm -hmm. even if you don't have the DLC. Yeah. So you could still, there's opportunities for you to grab them that way. So Puckle Raid Nights are probably going to pop off when people haven't quite got their DLC things yet. Mm -hmm. And all of us maniacs have already beaten the DLC package. Yeah. We'll see if yeah. legendary raids are their own special multiplayer mode, but for the regular Pokemon that are being added back, if you need hidden abilities and stuff like that, they'll be catchable in new mm -hmm. raids. So that'll be nice. Mm -hmm. And as someone that was like pretty openly kind of critical of this generation, the way that they're handling the third version and DLC has restored a lot of my faith and enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. It, it's nice to know that Sword and Shield aren't going to be made obsolete by the next release. Yeah. That, that was a thing that was happening for the past, what, five years, six years? It's like, oh, yeah, you just mm -hmm. have to get the next version because it's just the version we have to use now. Yeah, I'm excited for that being the base to how they're going forward. Extending the life of a game is a much nicer yeah. thing to do. Yeah, it's consumer friendly, which is nice. It is $90 overall if you're getting the game and that, which would have been the price of two uh, versions if you'd gotten a third version plus 10. So it actually ends out because it's only $30. That helps a lot, too, considering the Switch is a more expensive system to buy for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it fixes Thatch's story of little Timmy really likes Piplup and now can't use it without having to pay more money. If we get Piplup. Yeah. Uh, just as an example, though, like he doesn't have to pay money to get whatever's new, theoretically. He can to get the expansion pass and get it himself, but he can still trade with his friends and you're still you're still able to do yeah, it. Yeah, you're still staying relevant. That's the coolest thing. Good for little yeah. Timmy. Good for little Timmy. They're updating the base. Hopefully you get... Plenty of legendaries, so you can have copies of legendaries you don't mind giving to your friends and things like that. Too. Mm -hmm. And now that you can mint and bottle cap legendaries, ho, oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you use the right berry on them. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll confuse themselves. <laughs> In front of the world, yeah. 
That's apparently happening in the Dallas regionals right now. We talked about this between segments. Someone put the berry on for their minted nature, not their correct nature. So they're going through the battles confusing themselves. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> oh, that portrait. And then we're on stream. Now everyone knows. It's so uh, sad. Everyone knows their mistake. Imagine it being a G-Max Norlax and it has to replenish its berry. Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> So this is a PSA to check the original nature when you use a berry. Yeah. <laughs> check the original nature or else. If you're a neutral nature, I believe it doesn't matter. Yeah. But anyway, I think we've done a really good job kind of recapping the history of third versions. And we've expressed some excitement of our own, separate from last week's big excitement about the initial announcement. And some other details that have come out that make it a little, a little bit more exciting overall, like the, the fact that you can join raids that Sigma mentioned. So I think that's a good place to cut it. I'm really excited for this, and I cannot wait for June to roll around, and we can all experience this Isle of Armor together and see what they do with the new the new way they're doing third versions for the foreseeable future. Hopefully this sets the, like, trend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I, I would be okay with that. It's like, oh, yeah, and then we'll just move on to Gen 9 later. Mm-hmm. What what Sino remake? <laughs> what Sino remake? <laughs> yeah. Ugh. But anyway, we're going to cut it there. Uh, we're going to take a short break. You're going to hear me scream about some ramen. And we're going to kick it on over to the Pokemon of the episode. So we'll catch you on the flip-flop. <laughs> And welcome to the Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 862, Obstagoon, the blocking Pokemon. It evolved after experiencing numerous fights. While crossing its arms, it lets out a shout that would make any opponent flinch. So, Obstagoon is terrifying. Um, it It is UU by usage right now, but UU just banned it this week, so it's UUBL. Hooray, we have a BL tier again. And it barely made UU, or it barely went down to UU. By like less than a percentage point, mm-hmm. it was down there. And it's it's a frightening wall breaker, especially when there's so many ghosts running around. Ghost is arguably one of the better types in Generation 8. It's a solid type, period, you know. Dragapult, Aegislash, and Gengar are all terrifying, and they're throwing out Shadow Balls left and right, so you got Obstagoon to just be like, nah, bro. And what? And what? What you gonna do? Mm-hmm. I mean, you used to be able to threaten them with Pursuit, and that's gone, so. That would have been great, but still good. Still good stuff going on. Yeah. It's one of the only normal types that you can really viably use right now that I can think of. It's also one of the very few things that has knockoffs still. Yeah. Until, you know, next month when presumably movesets carry over. Yeah, but like, hey, use it this month. Push that knockoff, you know? So anyway, let's start off with this team. Starting off, we have Obstagoon himself holding a flame orb with the ability Guts. It's got 252 attack, 4 defense, 252 speed with an adamant nature. Because even though it's frightening, it does only have 90 base attack, but... It's still, phew, with Guts and Facade coming off of Stab. Yeah. It's gross. Its moveset is Facade, Knock Off, Close Combat, and Obstruct. That's the uh, that's its signature move, for those who don't know. That is basically a Protect, but if you Protect from something, they lose defense points. So, yay. Scary, scary. Makes you even softer. Because Facade wasn't hitting hard enough already, you know? We had to level up. Exactly. <laughs> At least it doesn't have extreme speed. Thank goodness. I was so scared of this thing. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it's got the Guts ability, which negates the uh, burn having your attack. So go to town with it. Facade is 140 base power stab move. And they can't put you to sleep. That's the nice thing about those things. Yeah. Can't paralyze you. Yeah. And you can absorb Shadow Balls all day long, especially now that Dragapult started running Thunder Wave and Will-O-Wisp. You you don't care. (laughs) You want to bring it on. So... That's Obstagoon, terrifying wall breaker. You just spam knockoff and facade and close combat if something that resists those comes in like Ferrothorn. So on to Mon number two. We start to get into just the backbone of the team with Obstagoon as the wall breaker. We have Corviknight with leftovers, the ability pressure, very important. 
252 HP, 76 defense, and 180 special defense with an impish nature. Move set is Brave Bird, Defog, Roost, and U-Turn. You can defog for days, and actually a common strategy now with Corviknight is to stall the opponent's defog out <laughs> with pressure so you set your own rocks again. So that's a fun thing you can do if you really hate your opponent. Oh, dear. U-turn is chosen here over something like body press to safely get Obstagoon in to crack something open. That's fair. That's Corviknight. Sublime, what you got? I got that Rodham Heat, y'all. I'm bringing the heat with the Rodham Heat. Uh, it's got the heavy duty boots because we love a earthquake immunity on top of not taking rocks. We're here for that. Uh, obviously, there's only one ability, which is levitate. <laughs> We're rocking the timid nature. We got the 248 in HP, 8 in special attack, and then 252 speed with the timid nature. That's going to give you the max speed. And because we love ourselves, we gave it nasty plot. Yeah, that's good. With overheat and volt switch, it hits hard when it's hitting, you know. And then Thunder Wave for a lot of good utility. Since Obstacoon's not that fast, that'll be really helpful. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we couldn't have a team without a Fairy types, unlike the TCG, you know. So we had to bring in the Clefable with Leftovers and Magic Guard. Ugh, I love Magic Guard. It's Calm Nature. We, we thick. We real thick. 252 HP. That's max. 160 defense and 96 in special defense. Thick. Very thick. We're Wish Passing. We Wish Passing with Protect. We helping ourselves heal. We helping our allies heal. We setting up the rocks. We got that stealth rock. And we got Move Blast because that's what's up. <laughs> cool fable. All right. Next up, we've got the Choice Specs Dragapult. Infiltrator ability. Max special attack. Max speed. Throw the extra point in HP. Timid nature. Standard Draco Meteor. Shadow Ball. Fire Blast. U-turn. Gotta get out when you gotta get out. Or just let something else come in and deal with whatever's gonna switch out on Dragapult. And then we have Gastrodon. It's using the East form because we don't have the West form yet until home. Leftovers. Storm Drain. It's our way to deal with Dracovish because that thing is scary. Because that's something you need to deal with. <laughs> yeah. It is something you need to deal with. Uh, EVs we have are max HP, 104 defense, 152 special defense with a calm nature. Scald, recover, earth power, clear smog. That's a pretty standard Gastrodon, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's different, I guess, is that it's running Earth Power instead of Earthquake with a Calm Nature because you're going to get burnt. Like, your primary switch into Rotom Heat, you're going to get burnt at some point. So Probably, yeah. Don't just willfully weaken your your Earthquake stab. <laughs> so yeah, that's the team. The whole idea really is to have Obstagoon crack the opponent open, um, survive until that point with your defensive walls, and then have Dragapult clean up in the end. Can you guess who made it? Can you guess who made this too? <laughs> <laughs> when you've got as as defensive a backbone as that, uh, like, hello, my name is Seth. I mean, he didn't try to sh sneak a Sableye on it, so I guess we're okay. <laughs> That's not, no, no, I'm not that far in. I'm not that bad. He hasn't figured that out yet. <laughs> no, I've considered it, but uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, well. But that's the team. We're going to throw it on the Discord server so you can hop on the showdown ladder with it and give it a whirl. And it should be a lot of fun. Obstagoon's fun. It's really fun. As a defensive player, when I see one on the opponent's side, I get scared because they're mean. So if you want to scare people like me, use this team. Anyway, on that note, we're going to kick it on over to the mailbag and read some listener emails. So we will be right back. It's mail time! It's time for the mailbag! Send in your emails! And welcome to the mailbag, the part of the show where we read your listener emails. You can email us over at pucklepodcast at gmail.com. We typically have a writing prompt for you, and last week's was just... What do you guys think of the DLC? What do you what do you think of the direct and the news from that? So we're gonna dive right into it. But before that, this mailbag is brought to you by the energy drink Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves. Yay. <laughs> we got it. Ramen. 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 Oh my gosh. So anyway, 
We're going to start in on these ones. I've got the first one from Trainer Sleeves. Hi there, Puckle Podcast. My name is Trainer Sleeves, and this is my first ever listener email. I've been on the Discord for a little while, but I haven't found the time to write an email until now because of school and midterms and exams coming up. Either way, I think this is a great topic to discuss, the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra DLC. When I heard there's going to be a Pokemon Direct, I was only mildly hyped, assuming we were going to get new info about home and such, but I was blown out of the water with what we got. First of all, the mystery dungeon is exciting, especially since it comes out only a week or two before my birthday, but that's not what I came to talk about. (laughs) I am extremely hyped for the Isle of Armor, mostly because I can't wait to see Rocket, my precious Cinderace, get a Gigantamax. I love all the starters Gigantamax forms, and is it just me, or is Inteleon just the literal personification of Pokemon Gun? (laughs) Yeah. I didn't... Yep. Yeah, Pokemon Sniper. (laughs) (laughs) That broke me. Um, I always look forward to what other Pokemon will be getting regional forms, beside the Slowpoke line, and people are theorizing that the Wurmple line will be getting one because Clara's bow looks like Dustox wings, but with a different color scheme. As for the Crown Tundra, I look forward to the new Regice because they look adorable. That's not the word I would have used. The fact that we're getting all the other legendaries is fine, but I like having them gone for the sake of balance in the VGC. I'm especially scared of Landorus's return. Dear God, help. Yes, that. Yes. Oh my God. (laughs) Max Airstream and Landorus is not something we needed. There was one other thing that intrigued me in the trailer, however. There was concept art shown for this one guy for the Crown Tundra, and I thought he looked cool but forgotten about him afterwards. But after some theorizing that he could actually be Raihan's dad, and since my weather boy is my favorite gym leader, I would love to see that. Huh. Sure. Sorry if this is a long email. Like I said, I've never written one before, so I don't know how typically how long they typically are, and there was just so much to talk about. Anyway, that'll wrap this email up. Catch you guys on the flip-flop trainer sleeves. So, yeah. Yeah, well summarized. I like the idea of the dust docks thing. I hadn't really thought of that. Yeah, I noticed those dust docks wings. I'm curious on what the uh, other Avery, I think his name is. I think he has, like, twisted spoons on his hat or something, so... They're Pokeballs ah. floating around his head. so Or her head. Is it a her? I think it's a her. It's a him. It's a him. It's a him? Oh, my. Their head. Confusing. Their head. <laughs> there we go. All right. Who's next? I'm next. All right. We got an uh, email from she, or is it shy? I don't know. Hello, Whimsicott. Hello, Sublime and Sigma. Got him. <laughs> Plans changed. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Shy here, emailing two weeks in a row because I can. What have y'all been doing lately? We told you at the beginning of the episode. Uh, Puckle P to you, I hope. We have. Lucky you. What do you, Sublime and Sigma, think of the new expansion? We think positively of it. As for me, I really like the idea. Uh, Sword and Shield felt really incomplete, so it's really cool that instead of making or remaking a new game, they are completing the current game. It also was really unexpected, which is weird for Pokemon. Another good thing is that it is really affordable. Like, seriously, $30 for what is essentially two new games? Moving on, the new Pokemon are going to be very helpful in BGC. Now, the thing I've been tiptoeing around the whole time, regional legendaries. I really don't know if I like them or not. I mean, I want to like them. I just don't think I do. The only regional form legendary I like is Mr. Spock and Mr. Doduo, but not Mr. Eveltal. Actually, I guess I like them all. In summary, I'm excited for this game, especially because they're adding new Pokemon and... Old and new Pokemon. Whatever. Uh, thanks for being awesome, and thanks to the hosts for reading this. Shy. Woo. Yeah, I like I like the regional legendaries. That's a. They look cool. I'm like so excited for Articuno. I wish it was the Lake Legends, but otherwise I'm yeah happy for it. They need help. The Lake Legends. They need a lot of help. <laughs> they need so much help. All right, who's next? Ah, that would be me. Hello, Puckle Crew, and the. Ageless, fluffiest whimsicott. Ha! Gotcha again! (laughs) Got him! (laughs) (laughs) It's been a while, and a lot has happened in the time while I've been away. I bought a house and now have a kid. The struggle. (laughs) (laughs) It seems like a few things have changed in my time away. Y'all have reached episode 400. Congratulations on that. It seems like Thatch is either a doctor or a professor. (laughs) He has a doctorate. (laughs) He got his PhD. Yeah. Yep. And I think he does do courses occasionally, but that's another thing. Anyway, I absolutely love the DLC announcement for Sword and Shield. It keeps the game going for so much longer than previous games. Do you guys think that there's a chance that we could look go back to previous regions via DLC? 
Thanks for reading, Ellis. I would love that. I don't think that they'll go that far. It no. would be next year, I think, if they did do something like that. But yeah, I would prefer it over a game. This could be the third version for Gen 6 we never got. Like going back to Gallus would be nice. I don't think we'll get a full like region in a DLC, but I would not rule out going to, especially for like the Sinnoh remake, we'll say that. That island that you go to post game with Heatran and all that kind of stuff, that would be possible, mm. I think, for going back to. Like, you're in Sinnoh, sort of, but you're just in one part of it. So I could see that. So kind of like how the uh, Skyrim DLC took you back to an island near Morrowind. Exactly. But Morrowind. Yeah. Oh, that was such a good DLC. Uh. Soul's Time. Except Soul's Time is just the the whatever island it is in Sinnoh. I forget the name <laughs> of it. The battle area. The Heatran Island. The Heatran, Heatran Island. island. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're going to call it. Anyway. So I've got the next one. And this one's from Trainer Chris. Hello, Puckle Crew. So DLC. This seems to be a hot topic at the moment. Here's my two cents. I'm cool with it. Leaving out all the Dexit stuff, I don't see anything wrong with this path. Instead of dropping full price for a third or fourth game, we get 200 new Pokemon added to the Galar decks for half price. And with new wild areas, woot, woot, swinging back to Dexit, I sincerely hope that what has happened in other fandoms does not occur in Pokemon. As consumers, not creators, we must be careful to both temper our expectations and not conflate expectations with the product delivered. Those were way too long of syllable words for my... <laughs> uh, my prize mon is an IV EV trained Shally Gal shiny Galarian Darmanitan named Kyle in a beast ball. Yes, he is banded. Before you ask, some crazy person in Japan surprise traded me a Galarian Darmanitan and a Beast Ball on launch day. If this is read on air, what is everyone's favorite shiny to actually use in battle? Keep up the great work, everyone. Trainer Chris. That's a good question. That is a good question. That's a good question. You know, just because I don't really have one that I specifically use. I like Clefable, but I mean, that's not that much that's different. That's not a very happy shiny. Our Pokemon of the episode is Obstagoon, and that one is crazy. <laughs> That's a great one. That is color. That's a good one. That's a great one to use. <laughs> I recommend that one. Last Gen, I shiny hunted a bunch of things. So I had a shiny Lando, but that's kind of boring. But I did shiny hunt the, uh, I shiny hunted Evil Tall. And ooh, that's a nice shiny. I love shiny Evil Tall. That's a good one. So anyway, next email. Who's up? I think I'm up. Right, this is from Disco. To the esteemed Whimsicott Sublime and Sigma. Got him. <laughs> Hello from a long-time listener, first-time writer. I have a few thoughts on the recent expansion pass announcement, so here goes. Like most, I'm really pleased with the direction Sword and Shield is headed this year and look forward to exploring two brand new areas and stories without needing to complete the entire game again, like we would with a third version, not to mention the price of $26.99 Galarian pounds. I don't know if that's what it costs in pounds. <laughs> I guess that's the price over there. <laughs> I think the pound is dropping once uh, actual Brexit happens. <laughs> <laughs> Not speaking of Dexit. <laughs> yeah, way more affordable than buying a full third version game. Final judgment will be reserved until we see the quality and length of the expansion content. But let's be honest, the bar is pretty low after Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> so much truth. All right. The fact that 200 plus more Pokemon are being made compatible with Sword and Shield in a free update is also welcome news. I know Dexit has been divisive for the community, but personally, I've really enjoyed learning this new meta with a smaller pool of mods. I'm looking forward to adapting as new threats come for Dragapult's crown. Uh, outside <laughs> of competitive... Oh, just wait for that Lando, yo. Don't just wait for that Lando. I'm so excited. It's the villain we want to root... I want to root for. I want to run Sheer Force Lando. Yeah. <laughs> outside of competitive, I'm counting on Galarian Glamyow slinking its way into our lives and hearts. I'm here for that. I hope it gets it. In my head, canon, it will be designed around a Manx cat. I, I assume that might be a type of bow for Manx. I don't know. Mm -hmm. With short hair and a stubby tail, but the twist is that it evolves into a glossy-coated, magnificent fairy type for ugly. What newer returning Pokemon are you guys looking forward to? Before I wrap up... I've been joking that uh, Galarian cats for both expansions, like a Galarian Skitty and a Galarian Glemia. Skitty needs it. Actually, and if we're doing that, let's give them a third evolution like we did with Mr. Mime. I think Perugly would be fine, but uh, Skitty. Skitty needs that. I want Perugly to become pretty again, so I want a third evolution. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll use it. I only use pretty Pokemon. Or you just give us more first. Meowths. I'm okay with that, too. Yeah, I'm okay with more Meowths, actually. That's true. Uh, before I wrap up, I have an unrelated question for you guys that's been keeping me up at night. 
Do you think that gym leaders born with names related to typings were destined to be monotype trainers, or did they change their names to fit after they got the job? I mean, no one looks at their baby and thinks, you look like a Bugsy, right? <laughs> Time to sign off. Looking forward to meeting some of you guys in the UUTC. Disco. Sent from my iPhone. Good for you typing that all on your phone. Aren't even eight typos either. Good for you. I think they were born with that name, and that's just what they were molded into. Yeah, although I do like the idea of, like, you choosing a name that suits your gym. Your name is Roxanne. You're only allowed to train Rock. Roxanne, dogs. Roxanne. Mm-hmm. And then we have the one. rebels in the Elite Four for Gen 4. That's like, no, I'm going to use a Steelix with Fire Fang. That will keep my father happy. Flamethrower, Drift Blim, Fire Punch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Last email we have here is from Fairy King Nova. Dear Puckle, I'm writing in regards to the prompt from last week's episode. I have a lot of feelings about the expansion that are coming this year. Firstly, I never expected the Game Freak would do DLC. It's always been a thing that fans have wanted, but never received, so I was pleased to see it. Secondly, my did we get a lot. Between the birds and the new Reggie's, I love the Reggies. They're my favorite legends and can't wait to catch Reggie Shock and Reggie Drac. <laughs> Please don't let that be their names. I want it to be Reggie Electric, but that... Yeah, I want Reg Electric <laughs> and Reggie Dragon, because that's how the naming convention is. Keep no, it no, going. we call it Reggizard because it's a Charizard skull. Reggizard. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> It needs to live on. <laughs> Don't. That will be a thing next gen. It'll be Charizard 5, Regizard. <laughs> I hate all of you. Also, this means they'll be in the show again. And we get some great beeps and boops. <laughs> uh, that that was a good Pokemon movie. <laughs> that was the Lucario movie, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the Lucario movie. Good times. As I take my leave... I yet again leave a small prompt for you. Thatch, last week mentioned the Apricorn Balls and what we might get new poke and that we might get new Pokeballs. We haven't had a good new Pokeball since Gen 4. That's not true. We had Beast Ball last gen. <laughs> so what ball design would you design if you could? What balls would we like to see? Hmm. You know what I want? I don't care about balls. I want the case system back where I can make it pretty where a Pokemon comes out of it. And right. That. Maybe not without le- without letters. So we could just kind of un- uncensor Yeah, just stars whatever. and colors and gas. Yes, that's what I want. Let me design the ultimate showing for my Pokemon to come out of. I want something better for fire types. Oh, yeah. Fire. Give it fire. Give that an option for the case. Have cases. a little just explosion happen when you release it. That would be I think oh. it was Gen 7 where they really updated the way that balls look when they come out mm-hmm. yeah something for fire types would be great I've, I've got my heart set on the dusk ball personally i always have i so. like it just is a ball after my own heart i'm a big ball. fan of like beast ball moon ball die ball the little splash that comes out snivy in a friend ball because it matches so those were our emails that's kind of the summary of all of everything so thank you guys for listening to our episode and it was a great time. If you like all this Puckle content, then we've got more for you. One of the best places that you can get more Puckly goodness at any hour of the day is our Discord server. There's an invite link down in the bottom of the description or show notes or whatever you want to call them this week. And you can click that, join our Discord. That's where all the tournaments happen. That's where the trivia is submitted. That's where you can talk to any one of us, like on voice chat and all that kind of stuff. So join us over there. Other than that, there's also things like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can follow us on to get some updates about general goings on in the community. If you want to support the show, there's a couple ways you can do that. One is through Patreon, and we appreciate every bit of it. Every bit of anything that you contribute goes right back to the community to get things like mics so we don't sound terrible and all sorts of other things like that that keep this going. I believe there's a goal right now that if we hit $850, Thatch will be playing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon when it re-releases. So we're close. Make him suffer. Do it. (laughs) We're close. Yeah, I think we're real close to that. And that's all thanks to you guys. And like I said, all of it goes right back to the community. Other ways you can support us include grabbing some cool merch from TeePublic. I think that's still going for the time being. And also... If you like ramen, we've got the uh, we've got the thing going on with Vite Ramen right now. You heard me talk about earlier, so you can go to viteramen.com and use code Puckle P U C L 
for 10% off, and that gives a little bit of kickback to us, and you get some ramen out of it, which is delicious. It's fantastic. Um, So that's another way you can support the show. Uh, Other than that, come listen to us on Puckle Plus as well. There's other shows on there other than this main show. There's the TCG cast that Jushiro hosts. There's Game Corner that Linian hosts, and there's Battlecast hosted by yours truly. So if you need more Pokemon content every other Thursday, or every Thursday-ish, come over there and listen to us there as well. Other than that, it's been a great time, and I'm looking forward to this DLC coming out soon. Don't you have a Battlecast coming out this week, too, or next week? Next week. The last Thursday of the month, so not this week, but next week. Yeah, plug yourself. <laughs> plug myself, I might, I might as well. That should be a fun one. That should be a very fun one. So other than that, it's, you know, it's been a great time. I've liked hosting it. I've, it's been a pleasure being here with you guys. It's been real. Well, fun time. It's been fun, and it's been real fun. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, I've been Seth Vilo. I continue to be Sublime. And I'm our Sigma. And it's closing time. I'm so happy I got to say that. See you guys next time. It's closing time.